When separated spouses live in different countries or provinces, they may wonder where the best place would be to get divorced. Whether separated spouses now live in different places, it may be possible to choose where the divorce will occur. To know whether getting divorced in Ontario or Canada is even an option, check out my video that answers that question. Different jurisdictions have different laws. Often it can be more advantageous for one spouse to get divorced in one jurisdiction over another. So in this episode of the Ontario Family Law Podcast, I will discuss some of the considerations in deciding where to get divorced. I'm John Schumann, a certified specialist in family law in Ontario, with extensive experience assisting clients with high or complex incomes. I'm also a mediator, arbitrator, and collaborative lawyer. I have a best-selling book, The Guide to the Basics of Ontario Family Law. The fifth edition is now on sale with many additions and updates to the previous editions to bring it up to date and make it even better. It is available on the iBookstore, Amazon, and in fine bookstores. Many separating spouses already know that where they get the divorce can matter. Some even plan their separation so that it occurs in the most advantageous place so that they can get a divorce there. For example, in some Middle Eastern countries, the husband gets to decide what happens with the children. As I went over in episode 89, child support in Canada can keep going up with the payer's income, no matter how high it is, while many U.S. states have caps on child support, some of which are below what is commonly payable in Canada. In light of this, when spouses live in different countries or jurisdictions, they may want to give some thought to where they get divorced. But before getting too crafty with selecting where to get divorced, there are a couple of important questions to ask. First, am I eligible to get divorced where I want? And second, if the place I get divorced is outside of Canada, will Canada recognize my divorce as valid? Separate spouses cannot choose any place to get divorced. Most jurisdictions have requirements for married couples to get divorced within them. Canada has requirements for married couples to get divorced here, which I went over in episode 55 and also in my book. To get divorced in Canada, you have to have been separated for at least a year and also have lived in the same province for a year. Many other jurisdictions require that at least one spouse live there to get divorced there, although not all jurisdictions have that requirement. So before heading off to get divorced somewhere else, it is important not just to check out how that jurisdiction deals with all the issues that surround the divorce, but also whether the spouse is qualified to be divorced there. However, for Canada to recognize the divorce is valid, at least one spouse has to have a substantial connection to the jurisdiction granting the divorce. So a spouse who returns to Canada may not find that his or her divorce is valid and has to do it all over again, including sorting out all the issues related to the divorce. Canada has these rules to prevent forum shopping, where one or both spouses look for a jurisdiction to grant the divorce because the laws that cover other issues, such as child support, spousal support, or property division, or parenting are more favorable. Recently, the Court of Appeal for Ontario held that forum shopping must be discouraged. It is a reason that Ontario will recognize a foreign divorce. And in addition, for reasons I covered in episode 72, a reason a judge could refuse to grant one in Ontario. Where each spouse has a substantial connection to a different jurisdiction, That can mean that there can be a choice between at least two jurisdictions in which to get divorced. So each spouse will want to find out how the law works in each jurisdiction to pick the place with the laws that best suit him or her. Usually it is best to get legal advice that is specific to your situation from a lawyer in each jurisdiction, although you can also learn a lot from the other episodes in this podcast and even more in my book. To make sure all that information comes your way, 
please subscribe, like this episode, and hit the notification bell so that you will know as soon as new episodes come out. When the laws in one jurisdiction favor one spouse and the laws in the other jurisdiction favor the other, each spouse may want to choose a different place for the divorce to happen. When spouses are eligible to be divorced in two jurisdictions, the divorce usually proceeds in the first jurisdiction where a spouse started proceedings. That can make it important to file for divorce first, to choose which laws will apply. A very important consideration is that Ontario courts cannot award spousal support if the parties were married and divorced someplace else. A blip in Ontario law says that Ontario courts can only order spousal support to married spouses who are getting divorced or to common law spouses who are separating, but not to formally married spouses who are already divorced someplace else. Things are a little different for child support. Even if spouses were divorced someplace else, Ontario courts can still order parents in Ontario to pay child support. Where things get a little bit more difficult is where a court somewhere else has granted a divorce and ordered child support as part of that divorce. Ontario courts will generally respect the orders made in other courts and hope that courts in other jurisdictions will respect Ontario court orders. If things have changed for the children since the original child support order, an Ontario court may change child support as a result. But this is an area where it will be important to speak to a good family lawyer to find out what is possible and what is not. How property is divided can vary drastically between jurisdictions. It can make a big difference in what the separated spouses owe between them, or even which one owes the money. In jurisdictions other than Ontario, spouses share in the change in the value of their assets after separation. However, as I went over in episode 48, and in more detail in my book, things are more complicated in Ontario. Separating spouses can try to manipulate things to their advantage. It might seem like it would be a good idea to try to get the divorce someplace else so that the property division laws there will apply. However, in many jurisdictions, including Ontario, the courts will apply the laws of the last place that the spouses live together to determine how assets should be divided after divorce. If the party separated in British Columbia, then the Ontario court will apply British Columbia property law to divide assets when granting a divorce. A court in another jurisdiction may use Ontario law to divide property if Ontario was the last place the parties lived together. So it should be harder to change the property division outcome by choosing a different place to get divorced. Parenting is another area where things can be a little complicated. Generally, if a foreign court has jurisdiction to grant the divorce, the Ontario court will respect that court's decisions regardless of where the children live. As long as that court puts the best interests of the children first, like Ontario does. So parenting issues can be determined by a court or a jurisdiction that is different from the one in which the children live. However, if the children are physically present in Ontario and they have not been abducted contrary to the Hague Convention, Ontario courts can make parenting orders for children if it is necessary to do so to protect those children's welfare. If the children have been brought to Ontario illegally, and especially if the, the Hague Convention on the Civil Aspects of International Child Abduction applies, then Ontario courts will refuse to deal with parenting matters and will send the children back home in all but the most extreme cases. And that means parents can assume that Ontario will not take jurisdiction. But if the children were wrongfully removed from Ontario, then the court here will absolutely make parenting and other orders to have the children brought back. As I noted in episode 60, Ontario judges really do not like it when one parent deprives the children of a relationship with the other parent. So taking the children someplace else to get a more favorable order can result in an 
Ontario order that denies that parent any parenting time with the children and imposes severe consequences for that parent as soon as he or she is back in Canada. In most cases, when a separated spouse has a real and substantial connection to another jurisdiction, which almost always includes living there, permanently the spouse has a choice to get divorced there or in Ontario if the other spouse continues to reside here. If a spouse legitimately starts a divorce in another jurisdiction, Ontario will recognize that divorce and that other court's powers to make orders regarding the other issues related to the divorce. But whether that actually makes a difference is another issue. Where a spouse has a choice of where to get divorced, he or she should always get the advice of a family lawyer in both jurisdictions and get a copy of my book to fully understand how Ontario law works. It is also useful to like and subscribe to this podcast and hit the notification bell to get the latest episodes that explain how family law works in Ontario. If you are finding family law or children's law confusing or difficult, or you just need to understand it better, or you need to know how best to make parenting work after separation, or if you need to understand how finances work during a marriage or common law relationship and after separation or divorce, get the latest edition of my book, Guide to the Basics of Ontario Family Law. The latest edition is already on the bestseller list, just like all the earlier editions. You can access it immediately on the iBookstore, on Amazon for the Kindle version, and Amazon can also deliver the paperback version directly to your doorstep. You also get a lot more Ontario family law information on www.schumanlaw.ca. Not only are there hundreds of pages of family law information and links, but there are links to get my book and links to reach my office to meet with either me or one of my colleagues. You can also contact us to make an appointment to speak to us using the contact information that you can find in this description to this episode. It is always best to get a lawyer who can give you expert advice that's specific to your situation. In addition to my website, keep up to date on family and children's law issues by liking my Facebook page, following me on Twitter or X at, and Mastodon at, at Schumann Fam Law, and finding me on LinkedIn. I'm also on Threads. Of course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the not notification bell to keep up to date. You can get all the audio versions of the Ontario Family Law Podcast on all major podcast services, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Music, and many more. Or you can get all the episodes at www.schubinlaw.ca. Just look for podcast in the drop-down menu. Thanks for participating in this podcast. We will get together again soon.